Well, I want to first of all apologize for the delay in tonight's programming. I um, have been uh, involved in some, deeply involved in some family matters uh, over the past 72 hours. And some of you may have known about my father's struggles with cancer, and he succumbed to cancer Friday morning at 3:30. And, um, and you know how it goes when somebody passes away. There's just lots of details. And people come into town and schedules go sideways. So I'm not making excuses, but it is what it is. And uh, I was definitely delayed tonight. Uh, and I have a call. Hold on one second here. Hello? Hey, Gloria. So what's happening? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm late. I'm on now. I'm on now. So I'm, I'm broadcasting live now. Bye. That was our guest for tonight, Gloria. Gloria Savage. You know, sometimes we just have to kind of go with the flow or go with the glow, as they say. Um, so that's that's what's happening. If you're out there somewhere wanting to listen to the show, I'm on now, okay? I'm on. I was late. I apologize. This is the way things go. People die. Shit happens. All right. I got that off my chest. Gloria's going to be calling in tonight, and Gloria is a pretty interesting person, Gloria Savage. She is um, many things. She's a singer. She is... um, a spiritual activist in her own way. Um, she is an author working on a, a pretty interesting book, which she'll tell you about. Uh, she's a big mind. She's also an intuitive. She's a mystic. And she's also an expert in aromatherapy. And we'll have her on uh, in about five minutes or so. And we'll get right to the heart of her story. And she's going to be able to tell you about how you can actually benefit from using aromatherapy for a multitude of uses Uh, and everything from, you know, waking up and staying awake during these turbulent and uh, uneasy times to chilling out, relaxing, to uh, improving your health. So these are, uh, these are all um, very, very important pieces that she brings to the table. So let me give you the number that you can call in later in the show. The number is 347-308-8995. That's 347-308-8995. So if you want to talk to Gloria a little bit later, in the next few minutes, you can reach her. Uh, you can reach her on this number. Before we get into Gloria and her wonderful world of aromatherapy, um, I just want to talk very, very briefly about what's happening in Iceland. I think it's incredibly important to pay attention uh, to what's going on there. Uh, There's a great website by by a fellow by the name of Chris Martinson. He's a PhD in economics. Um, He is a research scientist in the Fortune former Fortune 300 VP, the man knows what he's talking about, and um, definitely get into his website. He is the real deal, and he's talking about what's going on in Iceland, and Iceland is probably the first country on record to uh, stand up against the banking interests in the world, and uh, they're interesting. uh, Iceland is, is pretty much bankrupt. Part of what happened with Iceland is they got into they got into trouble um, with Bernie Madoff, and I'm not going to get into the granular details, but they had a, a publicly supported and marketed government program, and they encouraged their citizens to invest in this program so that they could you know reap upwards of nine to ten percent in their investments, and um, a lot of that money was funneled into Bernie Madoff's funds, so or Madoff's funds, and we know what happened there. And uh, that may not have been the only thing that, that tipped the iceberg on Iceland, but it, was a, it took a big chunk out of them. And now, of course, um, the Dutch and the British 
are offering settlement terms for Iceland, and generally we know what those settlement terms are. It's usually resources for perpetuity, and they're saying no. The people there are saying no. And this is going to be a very interesting test case. And the one thing about Iceland, which is really fascinating, is the makeup of the population. It is extremely homogeneous. I mean, it is not a diverse culture. So, you know, there are some great things to diverse cultures, and there are some things to uh, homogeneous cultures, which are also pretty interesting. And so they get to, they get to have the opportunity to speak as one voice. So they are they are in alignment with their decision to say no about um, what's happening with their country, and it will be a test case. Uh, you can you can rest assured that the people of Greece and uh, the people of Latvia, who are also having a very hard time, they're bankrupt. They're they're going to say no. What's going to happen? What's going to happen when literally dozens of countries around the world begin to say no to international debt? It's going to be a very, very interesting. We are going to live through some of the most interesting times in the history of this planet because people are, are wising up and understanding that there has been a very unfair game going on. And, um, and we're just starting to begin to see the seams behind that unraveling. So pay attention on Iceland. Um, we've got somebody on the phone here. And let's just check in and see who it is. It might even be Gloria. Hi, this is Free Association Radio. Who am I speaking with? Hello. 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 Who's this? Oh, it's it's uh, T Squared. I just couldn't get on online, so I I was listening on the phone. <laughs> I didn't. Oh. Push. It's, it's well, just I, push I, a button if I want to talk to you. I didn't push it. What? Hi. How are you? Hey, I'm good. This is uh, one of my. Uh, Facebook pals, T squared, and uh, she she called in a couple weeks ago, and there she is sitting on the line. So, um, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm just updating an old resume and listening. I'm excited about hearing you and Gloria tonight. Yeah, I am too. Gloria called me frantically, wondering where I was, and uh-huh. unfortunately, I've just been dealing with family stuff, so I got, you know, I'm really off a little late tonight. That's okay. I hear about your father. That's, that's okay. It's, uh, you know, it's part of part of life on earth. It's, you know what I mean? It is. Part, yeah. Part, part. So, so with all of your vast intelligence and your, and your worldly connections, why don't you, uh, why don't you take about, I don't know, four or five minutes you kind of tell me what you think is is happening right now in this uh, crazy and, and and planet that seems to be in flux. But what's your what's your sense of as to what's happening? Wow, my sense is I'm going to call on the phone and listen quietly. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the um, the planet sends some upheaval, isn't it? Oh, for sure. The yeah. Sense of it is is it's nonsense. But, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting that question. It, I feel it in my body often. And then here will come a you know, a hurricane or a storm or something. And uh, it's, just, it's just intense times, Robert. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, uh, people like the answer to why. Uh, I don't know the answers to why. They really don't even look for them. It's... Um, to me, like this, this is what's here. This is what's going on, and I'll hear yeah. a billion different whys depending on people's belief systems. I yeah. think, for me, um, the best and only thing to do with all of it is to keep putting out love and acceptance and patience, and uh, deal with what comes. It's funny you ask that because I'm just updating this resume, which was from back when, because my computer crashed, as you know, but I found an old one back from the hurricanes when I was running the disaster recovery center in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And um, so I have disaster on my mind, you know. Disaster on your mind. I mean, that whole thing with Katrina and Rita and trying to get help to everyone, and it was just horrific. And... Uh, 
So my, my consciousness is right there waiting for Corey to come, and you ask me what I think about the world. Well, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. It's, well, I'll tell you what. It's let's, got, let's, full let's, of beauty and full of all kinds of bedlam, really. Absolutely. Well, let, let's, let's bring on Gloria, and let's see what Gloria has to say, shall we? Mm-hmm. Hello? Hey, hey, Gloria. Hey, Robert. How are you? I'm good. I'm sorry I'm running late tonight, you know, but uh, it, no, you're no, on but, the air, No, Cameron. it's funny. How do I think in the right order? How do I listen <laughs> without being here? <laughs> How do you well, be there I without think, listening? <laughs> I think what you can do, you can you can go to the show it on the show page. It won't and work. You can, and hey. you can just listen in. You don't have to call in. I know, but listen. it wouldn't work. That's why I called. Well, oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try it again. I tried it. For try a while. it again, because I'm on. I'm on now. Before yeah, I, I wasn't on, and I'm on now. So, right. um, you, yeah. you can probably bail out if you want. But do you want to say something to Gloria before you uh, try try the alternative mode of Hi, listening? Hi, Tamra. It's nice to Gloria. hear your lovely voice. I know. You know what? Sound is so important to me, and it's wonderful to hear your voice. Too. I'm looking forward to the show. Thank you, and I really appreciate you coming and being here and on the phone, and it's very groovy. What a nice omen. Enjoy it. Right on. And um, I'll try and get on online, and if not, I'll keep the dogs quiet, and they won't bark on the phone too much. Okay, thanks. Okay, you can, well, go, you know you can go ahead and call back and listen. That's fine. But try, try, you know, you try the, just try the link on the show page. I think yeah, we'll it work works for you. now. Okay, yeah. great. Thanks. I'm and hanging bye. up. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, you too. Well, there we go. Okay, it's me and you, Gloria okay. Savage, uh, live heart. from from Cleveland, Ohio. Is that where you are right now? I am. Okay, so here Cleveland. we go. Let's. Uh, I want to give people some background about uh, you and about me and about how we met, and then we can get into your story and right. uh, talk about. We can get into your story and then talk about. Um, you know the work that you do and 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 a lot of the other stuff. That, uh, you're a fascinating person. You have so much going on, so many layers, like mm-hmm. so so many of us during this time. But just to let people know, I met Gloria through my blog, robertphoenix.com, and um, she actually reached out pretty early uh, in my blog blogging process, and she was one of the first people that um, came to me for a reading through that blog. I'd, I'd done a lot of other readings, and I was still working out my reading process. And I and I kind of I kind of worked it out a little bit on Gloria, and uh, and then I eventually perfected it, and I sent I sent her an MP3 file, and she got that, mm-hmm. and and then you know we've been we've been connected and friends ever since that uh, that initial meeting, and I think it's been about two years now. Is that right? I think it's been at least that because I know it was before I closed my store, so and that was the before the end of '08. So I don't know. Yeah, it was. I, I started yeah. blogging uh, in September of '08, and I think you reached out to me right around your birthday, which was in October of '08. Right. I think that's when. It, yeah. So. Um, I'm yeah, glad so I did. Year, two years and running. I'm glad you have too, and, and we've right. managed to stay in touch and and create this kind of uh, interesting little community on Facebook. Isn't it though? Yeah, and uh, to see, you know, to fill people in, there, it seems to be just this organically self-assembling group of people that you know are are attracted to one another, and and what attracts us to one another is a sense of uh, intensity and urgency and truth and um, and humor. There's a lot of very funny people <laughs> that are part of the group. Gotta have and, that right now. Yeah, and you know what I love about it too. There's, it's, we're not part of any group. We're not part of a face group, book group that's you know, uh, you know, my good friend Lawrence has Abomination, which is a pretty pretty cool group, right. and he's got va- he's got vaccination. But this is not a, this is not an aligned group. It's just a, a, a semi autonomous group, and we all sort of post with each other. And it's probably, I would say, if you add up all the people, it's probably you know maybe a couple thousand strong. Although not all of them post all the time. But uh, it's, it's a fascinating phenomenon that we're going through there. It is. It's been. It's, it has become quite the community, and I don't think it's coincidental, of course. And so I'm very no. interesting to see whose minds and hearts leap up off of the page and just yeah. sort of become a dialogue. And yeah. the whole energy all by itself, it's just amazing. 
It is amazing. And, you know, I was talking earlier about uh, this piece on chrismartinson.com, which is talking about how the, the, the people of Iceland are refusing to pay the debt. Right and it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting piece. And, you know, one of the things that he talks about is the Internet. He talks about how the Internet is getting people very hip very quickly to what's going on with, with the banking experience. And I don't think, you know, no matter how much game theory and, and computer modeling that gets rolled out in terms of, you know, scenarios, mm-hmm. I don't think that they can really account for the, to just the, the multidimensional splay that the Internet is creating. Right, and, you know, it, and it's, it is just happening so mm-hmm. quickly in so many different levels. It's, 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 it's this neural net, the global neural net, and it is firing off and building, you know, new connections and more complex connections every single moment. Like right now as we're talking, things are going on. You know, people are, you know, adding pieces together and subtracting and dividing and joining, and it's, fa- it's a fascinating phenomenon. Mm-hmm. It is. It's, so. it's, I've heard it called cloud computing. Well, cloud, com- yeah, cloud computing is one of these things where you have it's, – it's, it's an actual form of – if you had a computer, you wouldn't have a mainframe, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it, you, your, your mainframe would exist somewhere in cyberspace. You know, that's, that's cloud computing. That's an actual technology that exists. You know, I think what we're doing might be I, – I don't, I don't know um, – asteroid belt competing or something like that, <laughs> you, you okay. know. Well, yeah. there's no question. I, I, I have no question that we're aligned and connecting and prepared, so many of us, for just exactly what we're going through, even if it, you know, my own, own honest being would tell you that, of course, I get become afraid sometimes, and I am so... Um, Prepared. I mean, I have so many things to fall back on and to rely on and experience and so forth. But I just figure, well, they kind of knew that, uh, you know, let's just give this girl a break. She's been on this wheel for so long. Just, you know, load her up or something already. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit about you. And let's, let's, uh, let's start with... Um, some of the things that you've done, I, I know that you have spent a lot of time singing professionally, mm-hmm. and yeah. that that is one of the loves of your life. Maybe it you can tell some of the some of the people who are listening, some of the folks and great talents that you've worked with. Um, well, I guess probably the first um, people I got to work with were the OJs, and um, I was young, and um, went into uh, Kirk Yano's After Dark Studios. And um, and he was just a trip right off the bat. And this was my first experience. And um, it was uh, – talk about opening your eyes. I mean, I really was not – I was a pretty naive person. And uh, things were going on in there that I had didn't even have a clue about. Um, and I just thought, well, I'm going to act like I've – of course I've seen that. Oh, that, yeah, that's fine. Um, but anyway, I did that, and uh, they were very – very, very supportive. Um, in fact, um, Eddie Levert he said, just, you know, come on over to the house. I want you to meet my son, who, of course, since has passed. God bless him. And by the way, Robert, again, my sympathy for you with your uh, father's passing. Oh, thank um, you, Laura. And uh, thank, you, thank you so much for having me on tonight. Sure. Um, I did want to say that. And, uh, but anyway, he was very, couldn't be nicer making me comfortable. Um, so I got to work with him. I got to sing with uh, the Count Basie band when I was up in um, Oregon. Um, I've had, uh, see, I worked with uh, John Paris in uh, New York City. That was fun. And the Saturday Night Live horn section. And um, just lots of different people here and there that were just have been just phenomenal. I'm just really pretty privileged. And here in town I have some great musicians. Bob Frazier I work with who... He plays, uh, does a lot of set work with people and our studio work with people. And um, Alan Green, I'm playing with now some, and they're all just. Uh, I'm pretty blessed. I'm, I'm, I live a pretty blessed life in that sense. Great, cool. And I know you nice. like Willie. I did a little song for Willie Nelson. Ah, uh, yeah, our friend Willie Nelson. Right. 
Yeah, he's a great American, <laughs> isn't he? Mm-hmm. In his own really way. You better believe it. Uh, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't argue with that. That's yeah. for a second. So, yeah, I got to do a lot of cool things musically. And I still like it. Cool. Yeah. A friend of mine got got high with Willie one time on a tour bus. And it was very, he said it was a great experience. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm sure of that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah, He's proud of uh, that little story. Yeah. So, so you were uh, you've done singing, mm-hmm. and uh, when did you when did you really start to, you know, turn your head and kind of kind of look in the other direction and say to yourself, you know, there's there's more going on here. Well, um, I, I need to find out why and what's happening. Right. Um. I, I you know I gotta say that I've always kind of walked a different path and um, been in a really pretty different headspace. From, from very young. So that had was going on. I mean, I wanted to know why no one was talking about those big people watching us. And um, But then, you know, you become a teenager and you want to just be w- like what everybody else is doing and so forth and fit in, and that's not easy, right? So um, I did that, and then I had the singing thing, so I did that. And, you know, quite frankly, I'm glad I kept... I came home because my older sister, who has passed... Um, she took ill with cancer, and I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of uh, time left. And so, to me, I had to make my mind up about what what's the priority in my life. And um, I have super good opportunities happening in Oregon, but my sister was, I'm not going to be here. So I came home, and um, I worked on some things locally, and that got kind of disheartening. Uh, as this business mm-hmm. can be, it's like great about it. I'm like, well, you know, you gave me a voice. I appreciate that. I feel t- awful that I don't feel I have the skin to handle this business. Um, so I kind of decided that I, it was such a love for me that I, it, I, I didn't want to bastardize it. I didn't want to prostitute it. And, um, I just chose to t- try to start doing something else, and quite frankly, it probably saved my life. Mm-hmm. It had me dig into a, a being that existed that, would I have done that? I, I'd i like to think I wouldn't so that I can assuage my uh, <laughs> some some thoughts that I have had in the past about, you know, everybody wants to be what be all they can be. Uh, right. It did. It made me really sink in, and then I met my guru, and I, of course I met my ex-husband, and that was the whole thing, and he didn't want me singing, so I just really decided to dig in, and um, when I did, I started to find a lot of different aspects of myself that just really blew me away, and things just yeah. connect, and then this book, and then that book, and I was into everything, and in Cleveland, really, I was rare back then. It was, there was, uh-huh. that, that just wasn't happening. Um, right. I built a shop, and I was working my interior design business, and um, I had done some aromatherapy oils, um, as I thought I had gotten into it. And then what happened was, if one of my, a friend of mine, I um, was associating with at the time, yoga teacher and so forth, Reiki master back then, she says, Gloria, why don't you come to this aromatherapy intensive with Jeannie Rose? And I thought, well, I really, it was sounded Extremely interesting, but I thought it was a lot of money, and you know, a certain amount of time of I t- taking a week away from my then husband. That's not going to go over too big with him. And um, but what happened was, not too long before the whole intensive began, she called me up and she said, "Listen, some there was a woman that uh, has paid full tuition for this, and uh, she her health is bad, and she can't make it, so she." has looked at uh, the possibilities here of who, who, who wanted to go, and she picked you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, that really, once I got there and I started to learn what was involved, and I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I thought, how, how in the world can something be over 5,000 years old? I've really barely heard of it. And it can do what? You're telling me this can balance my hormones? Mm. You know, you're telling me that I can get rid of pain with a flower? Mm. It was not 
anything that my mind had really opened to before because, of course, I live in this world, too. Right. So, um, and then I had already had a hysterectomy at that time. So when she was distilling oil, she rose with Barbara Bobo, and she's just, you know, just fabulous, the light flashing. It was, the drama was all there, you know, Jeannie Rose. Uh-huh. And um, so, she, I start, I'm like, the, you're telling me that that could help you if you have endometriosis. Oh, yeah. And she proceeds to uh, pontificate and expound on all of the properties of what she was working with at the time, which was geranium. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, I couldn't take it. I started crying. And wow. so I went out. And I thought, I'm not just going to, you know, get in the way of the class. So I went outside. I got myself together. Next thing I know, I feel the angel Gabriel around me telling me, yes, Gloria, this is too late for you, but it won't be too late for you to share this with a lot of other people out there. I went back in the class. This woman, uh, Linda Honeycutt Legrand, that I met, that was from South Carolina, walks up to me and she says, I drew this picture of you, honey, and uh, because when you came back, I just wanted you to know Angel Gabriel was holding you. Wow. And uh, yeah, I was like, whoa, you know, how can I? So my whole body's like rocking and rocking as it does. And she looked at me, and I thought, oh my God, I'm thinking I'm I'm an interior designer. What is this? And she says, well, well, maybe you just are going to be doing interior design now, aren't you, honey? And I was like, whoa. Dude, that blew me away. Yeah. Right? And so yeah, lots yeah. and lots and lots of things like that took place. And it took me. I, I didn't take it. It it owned me. It just right. owned me. Uh, she and how, lo- how long ago was that? That was um early 90s. Early 90s, mm-hmm. okay. Yep, yeah, it was the early 90s. And uh, she, uh, she passed along Frankincense at one point, and, you know, she would expound on it, give us the chemical constituents. And, and of course, I know it as most of us knew it from the, the story, right, Frankincense and Murray. Right, sure. So, of yeah. course, I'm thinking, okay, let's check this out, right? And, of course, I inhaled that. And, um, and I thought I knew Frankincense before because I had smelled what I was told was Frankincense. But it wasn't like what she had. So I, I inhaled it, anointed with it, as we do. And it totally blew my crown chakra open. Wow. And, um, yeah, and then we had a uh, one point one day, she, she, she gives, before you graduate, some of the things you have to do is go out and sit with a plant and wait for that plant mm-hmm. to tell you its properties and what can it do, how can it heal you. And um, and also with the same with the oil. So um, I had kind of gotten a little hooked up with Jeannie, and um, I felt connected because I would get the answers and all that kind of stuff and, you know, doing my little apple polishing thing that I can fall into. And um, she, she, we have to get in line to get the oil. We have to work with it. I'm like, come on, frankincense, come on, frankincense, you know. And uh, she does give me that. She gives me this spiking art. And uh-huh. I'm thinking, uh-uh, don't you remember when I connected? <laughs> and because right. um, when I first smelled it, I almost, um, I almost vomited, quite frankly. Cause it was jagged, huh? Yeah, it was yeah, it's a very, It's a very strong scent. It was, but here's what happened. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Right? So I go out, yeah. and I'm working with it, and that's when it, I look into it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and here it's the oil of Mary Magdalene. This is the oil. Right. Nardostashi's Jadamansi, right? That she she yeah. anoints. Then the very act, of course, makes this Jesus, this Christ in the story. And to me, it's right. about this, what's going on in the story. Is much, I don't get stuck in all that stuff. People get stuck in with the dogma and all that other energy, that whatever. I'm, I'm into, like, what what is the mystic truth that's wanting to come out of here to open us up? Yes. Which yes. part is a gift because that's why you brought it, right? Right, so, right. So here's this uh, spike in art, and and when I, the more I looked into it, it's for wounds that will not heal. Okay. It is also called the false valerian root, and if you know, that's of course what 
gives it that little bit of an awful smell. And by now, I love the smell. And uh, <laughs> I do. And I tell people this, and they won't believe me because, of course, you have this experience with it. And, um, because of what it does, it harmonizes your whole, all, every chakra. It uh-huh. grounds you and opens your heart and crown at the same time. It's a root oil. And the wow. root itself is a rhizome network, so it's all connected under the surface, right? And up comes mm-hmm. these little shoots and flowers that are distilled. Well, mm. it is, um, Native Americans have used it because they believe it cures insanity. So far, I'm not completely finished, but I'm working on it. Uh-huh. But anyway, it's a, it, 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 it is um, anti-inflammatory. It is a, an analgesic, which is a pain reliever. Uh-huh. So when you think of these times and how it's craziness, really, in so many ways, you think I need to ground into the earth, and I need, and I want to connect into the the highest source of my being, uh, like the Solomon pillars, right? And so that just right. connects that whole your whole temple, your whole being, your whole little genie bottle into the earth deep and into your heart center deep, heart, earth, anagram, right? And mm-hmm. and then and you have this healing. So as you use it, and this has happened over and over and over again where people would not believe me, but once you start using it, and it attends to all those spaces in you that maybe were discontented or not addressed this issue, which is so important now. And it brings mm-hmm. them up, and that's why it bothers you in some ways. But then once you, once it sort of does its magic with you, you love the oil. You uh-huh. love that oil. And so I put it in quite a few things, my sleep angel roll on and heart uh-huh. chakra blends and so forth, yeah. Wow. So um, <laughs> when, you, when you use the oils, um, are you, are, obviously there's a number of different ways that you can – uh, transmit them, and, and one of them is most commonly known as a, as a diffuser, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and maybe you can talk about the different ways that the oils are delivered and how how they impact you uh, okay. upon delivery. Yeah. Why not? Well, the first way, that, that's the obvious way, is the uh, diffusion method, and um, a lot of people use what's called the glass nebulizer, and I work with uh, nursing homes and healthcare places and so forth like that, or classrooms, things like that, because it becomes um, a safer delivery method to, to mm-hmm. enter the, the, the space. And you can get a pretty, once you adjust, always use less first because you can always add more. But mm-hmm. once you adjust and understand your system, you can get a pretty, a pretty good idea of a measured dosage in, into the room. So that's one way. Um, but the other way uh, would be to I make a lot of actual topical applications. Um, the word aromatherapy is almost a misnomer. And people think, oh, I just smell it or I put it in my bath. All great stuff. Nothing, you know, nothing to argue with it. But what I want to do is get it on my body and on my client's body. And um, because you, once you do that, you cover that epidermis. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, it, it, they're, they're, it's such a really beautiful, tiny, in, you know, little finite molecular structure that's going on there. It gets readily absorbed, unlike perfume. You know, that's made to sit on the skin. Well, well this is nice, beautiful, loving, na- natural molecular structure. So it's not like the man-made stuff that's just huge and the big gulp and everything's big. No, it's just beautiful and, you know, intricate. So your epidermis absorbs the properties, the oil. And then that goes into your dermis. And in your dermis is your circulation. So just like people have, there's all kinds of patches, but tobacco patches, uh, um, for, so you don't get pregnant uh, patches, and lots of right, medical just, applications. Right, right. And, and so, testosterone so patches, lot, yeah. Right. And so, you yeah. know, I always tell people, you're not sticking your, it's not like you're sticking a cigarette in that patch, are you? You don't have to right. tell that patch, patch what to do, do you? No. So it's the same thing with these oils. So once you stick it, or excuse me, pl- uh, place it on your skin, it gets absorbed and it, it gets transported right where it needs to go because it has this 
brilliant intelligence right from the master mm-hmm. architect and and it knows exactly what to do and where to go and it, it's all actually medicine comes from the the, the plants not vice versa so right I, and still 90 some percent of medicine comes from that yeah. but medicine has a side effect because yeah. it's not completely natural yeah, yeah. right so that's the right side. Um, and then, of course, you're still getting some of your skin if it's, you're using a massage. Uh, mm-hmm. You bring that circulation uh, um, into play. And um, mm-hmm. and then that warming and so forth, and that gets helps, it helps it to be absorbed. Or you make compresses. I do that for the pneumonia or flus and colds and things like that with my Breathing Easy Roll-On. And then with the if it's... Um, as far as the, the, the diffusion method, I kind of like the little candle and the water and the oils uh, method because, I don't know, there's something kind of cool about that for me. Right. Uh, but then, you, then you're affecting your limbic system. And once you, once you see you're in, inhaling and it goes into your olfactory and your limbic system, which is this ancient millions of years old system in us, and, um, you know, fight or flight, hunger, sex, appetite, and memory, right? So that's why you you, you tell someone um, coffee brewing, and you can right. smell it from memory or cut grass right. or so forth. So it's powerful that way. And it, that's another reason why it works for healing, too, because you can bring up issues and uh, things of the past, and then... There they are on the surface, which is what you want to do, right? You want to peel that onion, so to speak. And once that comes up, then you can attend to that and assuage the being, not only with some of the loving properties of the scent, even just the scent part, the sensual part of it, but the um, actual medicinal properties that are involved. So headaches, right? You know, peppermint. Right. Things like that. And so, yeah, and you want a 2% dilution in... Um, I use jojoba. Uh, it's a wax that's liquid at room temperature. All my roll-ons and my chakra blends are in jojoba. I have a botanical cream. Uh, I make some creams and salves and so forth with, or um, uh, I, I um, use a 2% or more dilution, actually. I, I kind of up that because my people know and so forth for a lot of things. And I want to up to 5% and so forth. That's a good uh, blend. But people can use olive oil, but then you have a little scent. But mm-hmm. I try to figure out ways to help people keep the cost down, which is also why I ended up just making a bunch of uh, products for people that are already. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, the one the one thing about uh, working with somebody like you, by the way, your your website is arcancient.com. Is that correct? That's correct. A-R-C, no H, and then the word uh-huh. ancient, A-N-C-I-E-N-T dot com. So arcancient.com, you can find out more about Gloria in, in her her work and what she does with aromatherapy there. But I, I, I would suppose so. Now, most people who get into aromatherapy, at least at a kind of an initial stage, they might go into a whole food store, right? And right. they go to the aromatherapy oil. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a chart there. Mm-hmm. Or maybe there's a book or maybe there's somebody right. uh, that's working the aisle and they can say, well, you know, this is good for this, and this is good for that, and they may take it home, put it in a diffuser, and they may get, they may have an experience, um, right. and that that would be wonderful. Mm-hmm. But the advantage of working with somebody like you mm-hmm. on a one-to-one level is that you can get very uh, granular and really find out what's going on with a person, and and then really go in and and, and craft customized blends for people. Am I right? That's, you know, that's absolutely true. And the other thing, of course, is that when you deal, the minute you deal with a, a, a box um, that you walk into, <clears throat> the, the, the chances are that the, the, the quality is really not going to be there. I try to buy, um, and I don't really want to disparage stuff out there too much or anything, get into that too much, but, but I do want to educate people. And that would be that, um, you know, I try to buy organic when possible. I buy only grade A therapeutic, not what you're mostly going to find, which is commercial grade out there. And that, the difference between just those two, there's other uh, grades and differences, but just those two differences are market. Because when you, <clears throat> a commercial grade is not going to be as, they're not as uh, picky 
They're not mm -hmm. about where it's picked, how it's picked, when it's picked. So, like, for instance, lavender, 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 which is real popular. But it, it likes altitude. Spike nut likes altitude. So mm -hmm. if the higher up you go, the sweeter the scent, in the case of spike and art. And um, the less um, you might have other more toxic effects from something that doesn't come from that altitude, quite frankly, in those particular two oils, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you have that. And then they all just sort of grab a lot. Of, so something like heliochrism, awesome skin care oil, right? You just want the flowering tops and flowers to distill. Mm -hmm. And um, they're not going to be that, that picky about collecting and harvesting um, that product. And the other thing is, is that they're, they're going to get that, um, just in the distillation process, they're going to get that thing up to a rolling boil, which is already wrong for getting mm -hmm. the real key therapeutic properties out of um, the, um, the essences, right? Essence is right mm -hmm. there, S-A, to be or to exist. Mm -hmm. And um, so that commercial-grade oil, you're going to get a lot bigger yield, so you can have a, a lot more bottles filled, and put more on the shelf because they, you know, it's all about the bottom line there. I'm just not aligned. I'm just not aligned with that kind of thinking. I, mm -hmm. I like the magic of it. I like the specialness right. of it. Yeah. Right. Right. So, really, I mean, the advantage of working with somebody like you uh, mm -hmm. is that not only are you getting uh, very uh, specialized guidance and and um and blends but they're also getting really high quality ingredients right so this is this is this is wonderful how how long would you estimate that aromatherapy as a as a science as an artful science has been around well you know they have proof of it um that i know of um over five thousand years just from uh, the excavations at karnak and thieves so, I mean, they find a the little vessel <clears throat> um, with the residue and so forth in there. So there's right. proof of that from 5,000 years ago as opposed to our Newtonian model, which is like 100 years old, right? Right. And, um, yeah. yeah, so just that, it's, that's, a, that's a pretty good gamut of time, especially considering the little pocket of time we're in right now from the square and aligning with the Milky Way and so forth and into Aquarius, so it's, it's kind of interesting that that little time frame there may be bitten back from the just before the the deluge, if you will, if that when it was. Right, right. right. Uh, on a practical level, uh, there's a uh, one of the uh, people that come to my blog comes to my blog on a fairly frequent basis. She's a a school teacher, mm -hmm. and she's working with a classroom full of kids that are. You know they're 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 hyper activated. I mean right. they're not hyper they're not hyper kid, but they have mm -hmm. a ton of energy. And as you know, you know as well as I know mm -hmm. that what what's being sprayed in our skies right now um, affects people in uh, a very big right. way, mm -hmm. very yeah. big way. And part of what it does, part of what barium does, is it raises blood pressure and it agitates people. Mm -hmm. And um, so she is dealing with you know kids who are high energy to begin with, and if they're outside running around uh, on a spray day, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of jumping, jumping out of their skin. Right. So she asked, she asked me, you know, what, you know, what could I do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I thought that she might look into, excuse me, would be aromatherapy right. and bringing aromatherapy into the classroom. And I know for her, uh, the classroom and school district she teaches at, it's fairly conservative. So, you know, I, I don't think she would That's want funny. anything that would be ostentatious, <laughs> you know. It wouldn't be – maybe maybe there would be something, you know, a scent that would be semi-familiar or maybe you could sort of detune it so it wouldn't be so cold. What would you tell a person like this and what would you suggest that they, well, that they do in the front? You know, I actually do work with some classes like that and um, and in particular some with uh, special needs and so forth cause, or autistic children even. And um, the thing, you, I would go back to that diffuser method, but she can even just put it on a Kleenex or something in the room somewhere, um, cotton balls here and there, and just I make, a, I make a special blend for certain people that way. But in, so some of the oils that I use in there would be 
just as a base note, you can use vetiver. Uh, vetiver is uh, all ca called the oil of tranquility. Um, because the spikenard, I actually do put in there, but I make it so that it's not so uh, invasive, right? Because right. it can have a pretty. So then you use those as a base oil. For your vetiver, again, is an, another root oil. And when you're looking at these oils, that's the kind of a tip. You can always look at where, which part of the plant or the tree or the shrub is, or the fruit, for that matter, is that medicine coming from. Root, right. stalk, tree, bark, resin, leaf, flower, and so forth. And um, so root oil, so vetiver, spikenard, then, and just minimal amount. So say, say if you used a drop of each of those. Or either of those, if 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 you wish, you could because you could probably just use the vetiver, and then right. um, maybe some alang alang, Penanga odoratum mm -hmm. that has some uplifting but balancing, yummy properties too. Um, right. And it's a bit of an aph aphrodisiac. So what happens is not even actually a bit; it's quite a bit. Um, but when you balance it out, so you have the vetiver in there, and then some alang alang maybe, and you could put a top note in there then, maybe some lemon. Or orange, even, and the kids like that, that right. orange smell, or even a drop of cinnamon. Uh -huh. you know, cinnamon's real strong, so you have to be real, so you just have to play with the the the, the, the combination. But something right. like that, and you can obviously put lavender, langostophilia, or your lavender in there, and just, or and patchouli, pagastamum cablum, but that's also a little bit of a heavier oil. Um, so she, I would play with some of those oils, and maybe some clary uh -huh. sage, that's that's sort of got a little kind of stimulant in, but on an upper type of thing. But when you're talking about an aphrodisiac, what happens is is that it's not so much as it's a, it, they do stimulate um, certain drives in you, but they're creative. So you can either create in the sexual way, but you can create in drawing and art and exactly what you want kids to do. And if you have that sort of balanced combination, it it has a uh, it's uplifting, so they're right. not. It's an antidepressive uh, factor. Mm. So you have that in there. It's really pretty yummy. And she or she could even just do something really simple like peppermint. Uh -huh. And peppermint is a stimulant in in ways, but it it's it has such a yummy effect on kids that in and of itself gives them a comfort factor that's calming. Yeah, right. Right, yeah. and then of course, like most of these things, um, if you if you tend to do one thing, you know, too often, too long, right, um, it, it tends to lose its potency and effect, and you have to kind of switch it up and yes, bring sir. something else in. And, and right. I think this is great, and I hope she's listening. And if she's not, she'll certainly listen to the uh, to the podcast. She's listened to all the shows so far. So what about what about our workplace? Where these are very challenging times mm -hmm. uh, in ter in terms of you know people working mm -hmm. extremely long hours to keep their current jobs mm -hmm. or wondering if they're they're going to keep their jobs. Uh, let's say you're somebody who who's in the workplace pretty conscious and you wanted to, to shift the the overall attitude and the vibe in the workplace, right. how would you su suggest going about it? And would you use some of the same things that you would use for the kids that you just, just described well, or would you kind sure. of go into a different direction? Right. Well, you could. I mean, and like you said, changing it up is key, uh, quite frankly. So because if you use actually a single note over and over and over again, it's going to lose its efficacy over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on you is depending on how quick that could happen and how much you use it and so forth. So anytime you start adding a, another note, another note, which we call an oil, okay, so another note, another oil, another oil, then you're getting a more complex structure and the body is not going to be able to build up a tolerance level that quick. So that, that's definitely going to happen. And, yes, you can use um, some of the similar oils I mentioned. But if you're talking about an adult now, I would say uh, adding the frankincense. I, in fact, I tell people just um, um, I make a, an ascension blend and I make a um, sensual healing blend, and both of those are antidepressants by uh, by themselves. But also, you can just inhale it or anoint yourself. And but when you do that, you you bring yourself consciously to those 
the, the very secret forces of nature. Hmm. And that's magic, right? Because you're yeah. aligning with the divine. Right. So that in and of itself, just the act, becoming, taking the time out and becoming conscious in like the essence of those oils, uh, which the uh, olera or they're volatile. So the, that comes from volare, meaning to have wings or to to fly. Remember the little song, volare. Right, volare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was nice right. for you. That was good. Right. Yeah. So then yeah. you, you bring that up. Um, just quite li- does lift you. It it they will lift you, and you can sort of escape. I used to, <laughs> I used to do that with that. I put I have long hair, so thing about the oils, like I said, they get absorbed, right? So I put some on my hair because it stays there then. Uh-huh. And so I'd be working with the, some clients can be you know challenging, we'll say, and um, you know after they get to that last point of challenge in your being um you know i just sort of take some time and get into my hair and smell it and it right. takes me out and um bring it calms me and it lifts me and next thing i know and go right back to that person and go okay dear you know go right back to them and and take care of them and because they are challenged and the other thing I tell people is to, um, I, even when I'm working on a client, when I'm doing some body work, I put my sleep angel roll on on my feet. But you can just take vetiver. Uh, and uh, by the way, you should, you should actually make sure you dilute these. Um, there are some you can use what's called neat, which means not diluted. But I always put, uh, um, err on the side of safety so somebody doesn't come to me and say, well, you said you could... Too, too complicated that way, so just dilute them. Always put them in something. And people that are out there teaching differently, that's it's not really a good idea. Um, it's okay a little sometimes, but really you want to be safer than that. So anyway, I would just anoint my feet. Just the act of consciously connecting with the earth below me that's rising up to meet my every step. And so that I know, okay, I'm right here. I've been here before, and I'm going to be here, you know, in a few minutes. And um, and that's the moment-to-moment and right atonement, right at one moment, right there with that connection. And they have that gift to walk with you, to give you that strength, you know. I mean, right. valerian, it, it comes from valor, meaning strength. So it gives you strength. I mean, I can't even imagine going through these times without these oils. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, I think that's uh, one of the reasons why, you know, I wanted to have you on, other than the fact that I think you're a pretty cool person, oh, is is that, is that you really, you know, uh, have something to bring to the table when it comes to, you know, dealing with a lot of the stress and the pressure and, and even beyond the stress and the pressure, the what I what I would call the um, it, it's almost like uh, the, uh, the 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 trance, you know, the, the the vice grip of the trance that is always sort of surrounding us, mm-hmm. you know, the, the hum of the trance, mm-hmm. whether mm-hmm. it's uh, you know ELFs and cell phone towers mm-hmm. or our cell phones or computers or you know, scalar waves. I mean, we are we are being bombarded constantly with this electronic noise, electronic static, electronic right. pollution. Right. And what that does is that that takes us out of our natural state. Right. It, it does. And, and, and by by bringing the oils mm-hmm. into our lives, right. it, it 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 sort of balances that out, and it gives a kind of a fighting chance, I think. Right. In terms of dealing with all the synthetic manipulation oh, for sure. that's taking yeah. place. Yeah. You gotta get in to so, get out. Yeah. Right. So if you are out there and you and you are in the workplace and you are se- you're semi conscious and semi turned on mm-hmm. and you wanna serve and you wanna make sure right. that the people around you, you know, are 
actually operating and, and expressing themselves at their highest potential, one of the most covert things you could do in order to you know, bring a sense of en- enlightening their atmosphere right. would be to employ essential oils. Right. And, well, it is liquid light. I mean, photosynthesis, yeah. it, it is the light. You know, I yeah. mean, in everything, obviously, any of your senses are expression different, um, but uh, uh, different expressions of vibration. Yeah. But they are connected, and you're right. Once you see, they're unlike humans. We're always going, "Is this right? Am I doing this? What should I do next? How? Do, what do I look like? How? Do, what do you think of me? How am I fitting in? Do I want to fit in? So on and so forth. Or be, do I want to be at this job? Really? You know, what am I doing here? Oh, but i got to make that money. Well, the, the very, see, the, they don't have that. They're, they're right there. They're just, they're essay, exactly right. who they are. So the daffodil's right. not blooming down, you know, down there and looking over there and thinking, what's everybody think, think the rose is all, all that, right? Right. The daffodil right. just goes, boom, spreads its, you know, petals and, stretches its being right out and says, oh, here I am, shine down on me. And yeah. it's not even thinking twice about it. So yeah. here, for us, that's exactly what these oils do, uh, not to mention the protection they bring, not to mention right. the grounding, but it connects you right into who are you. And isn't that the point? Right? Absolutely. I mean, who are yeah. we? What integer am I on this planet in perspective in my space and how can I bring that key, my key, into this world to share and to be valid and to help and train someone else be, you know, find where they're valid and valued because I think that's what's happened. People people feel so usurped yeah. and so unheard that they, what value are they? What's the right. point? And, right. and this brings you right to that point, right to the connection, right to the Michelangelo finger of God, right? Right. Boom. Here I'm reaching up and you're reaching down. Boom. I'm here. I am yeah. so here and vital here. Right. And once you do that and you, you bring that walk in the park, that walk in the garden, right into your soul again, right into your being, your being knows. What's yeah. valid, yeah. right? It goes, oh yeah, this is what we're talking about. We'll stick with this plan right here. Yeah, I like that. I mean, so right. you know, yeah, I mean, just it just it boils it right down to the essence. I mean, it is what it is. It is right. expressing itself perfectly, and it is a reminder of how we can express ourselves perfectly as long as we can unfold to the wonderful pattern that we all inherently right. have within us. Right. It blooms you, baby. And here's the yeah, thing, the wow. other part of it, of course, is that, you know, when you look back, and I don't care the text, it's, they're used in every spiritual tradition. So I'm not like going, you should be this, or you should be that. That's totally not my thing. Um, but they are, like in the Old Testament, you're, you are, it was banned from use. If you, you could be kicked out of the village for using uh, oils and the sacred blends and anointing yourself. If you're not a priest, dude, you you better be laying off of that, right? Wow. It's like wow. several of the um, seven sacraments, baptism, extreme unction, right? right? So it's uh, powerful stuff. And I always, that's what I look for. I go, okay, what? We're not supposed to do what? Why? I wonder what's in there. That's when I go, <laughs> you got my attention. I want to right. know why. Oh, this is forbidden. And why was it for, you know, why did they demonize it so much? Why? I mean, if we look at one of the biggest things we got, a pop, look at we, they're the big medical package, right? Right. Who of yeah. us is not walking up and going, what's up with the drug industry, the big pharma? Well, that right. all came from the demonization of, uh, first they had the witch, witches, which is from the wit, wise women, and I'm not saying you should be witches and so forth, and a lot of that is, People practicing, quite frankly, the the very demonized version that they peddled them to right. to, to murder 18 million pe- women. But the point is, is that uh, they had the, the the witch, which came.
came from wit, W-I-T, which is wise. And then mm. they added the word doctor, the witch doctor. And then, right. you know, we just dropped the witch part. We burn a few right. people and, you know, um, torture them in front of their children. So forth, some people have a funny way of stepping back. So, okay, I don't, I don't know. I, don't know the, I didn't even pick an apple today. <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not even. I yeah. don't even touch that stuff. And, right, uh, right, and, right. And now what? And then, and back then, the healer, it was, it was just that was your code. You heal if, if that's your code. No, do no harm. Heal right. when half, right? And now, yeah. and you brought whatever you had, and if you didn't, you still got taken care of. Yeah. Right, and 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 yeah. the, the doctors initially still were going to the house and knowing the family. So we have gotten so extrapolated, so far out, away yeah. from that, away from the nature, away from the connection of our source, away from who we are to each other even. And yeah. this is exactly what brings us back. Boom, right there. Right. Right there. Yeah. The whole the whole thing with with uh, medicine and uh, what you know the medical industry is just a it's a it's an oxymoron unto itself right I mean medical industry I know. it's just yeah. it's just become so uh, you know insanely abstract it is just insanely abstract and mm. I think you know things like essential oils are are you know critical for us to be able to really get back to square one. And um, begin to understand, you know, who we are at an essential level. And these, and these work very subtly, don't they? They're just incredibly subtle. Yeah. Well, I have um, nursing homes off medicine, just using mm. the creams and the blends and some techniques and um, little sensory rooms. I've helped them set up. I mean, you can uh, you can get rid of pain. I have an arthritis and fibro cream I make and a, a muscle ease. You can, uh, I have a sleep angel you can go to sleep with, which I made for me initially because I have a, you know, a little bit of an active mind. Right. um, Sometimes that thing is just rocking, and I go, you know, it's all good, fine and good, but I got, I got to, I got to be up at seven. I got to call him the angel. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My angel. So, uh, or or breathing easy, and I've gotten rid of pneumonia with that. These flus going around, I, I, I got a little something going on to take care of that now. Good. Right? So, it's it's fabulous stuff. Yeah. Good. What about pets? What about aromatherapy on pets? Yeah, I do. You know what? Uh, That's not, there are other people that that's, they're more their specialty, but I do help people with it. And you can use... Mm -hmm. A lot of the same different kinds of oils in a much, 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 much smaller dilution. Same with children. You have to think of them as being, you aren't going to give them an adult aspirin, so you're certainly not going to use an adult dose of this either. Um, and it's, I don't want to scare people, um, for sure, but I do want to um, err on the side of caution and reason. Um, but uh, you can use um Different oils for pain and um, calming them down. I, I had a woman call me about a horse, and I made a little blend. It um, hit its uh, knee on um, jumping, trying to jump a gate, and I made a blend with uh, with some vetiver and some ginger, and some juniper and some rosemary and um, chamomile, Roman chamomile, and. Um, um, just to sort of start with, and I, what I did was, and this is a good way to, to do it with pets, is I made it for um, a compress, and we made a hot bucket of water, and, you know, of course, I talked to the animal first, which, of course, if you're an owner, that, that's, well, sometimes you might can't, I have to talk to, and that still doesn't work sometimes, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, yeah. so I wrapped it, I, I made the hot uh, compress and put the um, cloth in there and wrap that horse's uh, leg up and um, tied it with uh, some um, ripped up sheet uh, material. And that horse knew honey. His knee was so swollen. And he looked at me and see, they know. He knew yeah. I was loving him and right. take care of him. And and uh, we, I just kept repeating that process. Compresses are always a good way to mm-hmm. uh, apply. 
um, and then yeah. wrap a towel and so forth. But in a, um, about probably less, it wasn't even an hour that knee was on, not was just, there was no swelling. So, wow. Yeah. That's great. Right. That is the terrific. same thing yeah. with. Um, so you know, a lot of times they have their uh, hind legs or the hip displacement, um, so forth. Same kind of thing you can use for that, or just you know make a little blend up with the jojoba, and you can rub it right in there, and just start right. with less. Start with less, and increase, right. and, or just email me or call me, and I have a Facebook page too, the Archangel uh, Facebook page. They can kind of get with get to me on too. So just call me. I'll I'll be more than happy to help help people out that way. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. stuff. So what I want to do now is I want to give out the number. Okay. And if there's anybody out there that's listening and you want to talk to Gloria and you want to ask her about any kind of a an ailment or an issue or something going on in your life, and she might be able to tell you, uh, suggest a little aromatherapeutic blend or action that can uh, bring you a little relief, the number here is 347-308-8995, 347-308-8995. Eight nine nine five, and uh, while we wait for people to line up and, and give you a call, um, I just wanted to, to also mention uh, a story that I know about you. This is yeah. you, know, you, sh- you shared this with me personally. And it's about it's about what happened to you recently in your personal life, and um, how you went from. And there's a caller on the line waiting, so I just want you to tell the story quickly. Okay. It's about being in a, in a position where you were not happy, yeah. and then you left the position mm-hmm. and the magic that took place once you left. Well, uh, yeah, I was um, feeling super disconnected and uh, I've rattled inside, and I felt like I kind of was in a blast burn in a way. And I was like, what is this? And it didn't. It didn't settle into me because sometimes things that when I'm in it, it's not quite getting to me. And the next day, it's like the information downloaded, and it starts to trickle out. And then the next thing, I'm like, whoa, we had the, we had a pole shift. That's what we had. And I was in, we're going into this Milky Way aligning, right, with the uh, right. great center. And um, it's like waves. I, I, I liken it to being on a boat and hitting like boom, 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 right? And people are all going, well, at 2012, on this date, this is going to happen. Uh-uh, it, we're in it, right? We're, right. It's, a, it's yeah. a layer upon layer of what's happening. So I knew the core, This we had that pole shift. And I knew it was like burning off my fuselage and getting rid mm. of uh, a few more things. And all I can think of is the people that have not even begun to wake up. Boy, yeah. we're going to have our hands full. So we got to get sentient and get real and be ready. Wow. Yeah. Well, listen, we got some people lining up here to call you. I got somebody on the line right now. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? And what would you like to ask Gloria? Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Robert from Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm calling to ask Gloria. Um, I, I'm actually a fan of hers. I, I've posted things on Facebook with her. And I'm aware that um, basically... She, you're somewhat psychic, is that right, Gloria? Yes. So um, yeah. I, I'm I'm curious I about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious uh, what you're seeing for like the the year 2012, and I also know that you have a um a relationship with Mary Magdala, right. and I'm wondering if. Uh. The information that you have, if you're willing to share that, um, if you could share some of your your thoughts on how she is guiding our planet or or giving us some insight into the year 2012. Well, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you though. I'm glad you called, Robert. Yeah, it's nice to nice to talk to you on here. Um, well, we're going into the Milky Way, which is the Great Mother. And for me, this all started back, um, obviously, with the oils, and my connection had me really do start to really connect with her. So I get information from her um, often. And, um, I mean, not every day, but it's it's often enough. And one of the things for me was I, I dreamt 
um, that, that Twin Tower and before it happened. And um, the, the, the plume of smoke that when I saw it, it, it turned into each of the different sages. And they all said the same thing in a different language, basically, which was just all you have to do is love one another. And she was the final sage in this, like a thousand foot tall, foot tall plume. And she walked out of that plume and onto the planet. And uh, she said that same thing. All we have, like a stern mother who's just loving her children. That if we just look to each other and see that we're in each other's arms, that all we have to do is love one another. And when you look at that rhizome root that's just under the surface, it's all connected. It's like we are. And so many of us are finding out now, in even the science that's proving this, right? And um, so she's guiding me here. And I, you know, for me, I'm, I'm in the Roman numerals is Mary Magdalene, the waves. The Aquarius sign is MM. It's um, the, the high priestess at the temple. It stands at the Solomon's gates. And for me, yeah, we're going through some things, but she connects us like that veteran, or uh, excuse me, the spike art, which connects you right into your own central being, to the core of the earth, to the central sun, to the midnight sun. And she is, I believe, it's this rise of this divine feminine to balance the masculine that we've been worshiping, that solar god alone. And so it's the, it's the return of the Fisher King. It's the Holy Grail. And it's, so it's not an either-or scenario for me. It's a both. It's this fabulous couple of that magnificent woman and this awesome, strong man. And that's our being, you know, that's split with the left and the right hemispheres, the left and the right hand and so forth. And, you know, Zeus says, I will split you in two. Well, and you'll go forever seek after your other half, right? So what are we doing? We're, we're, we're like, everybody even says that. I'm looking for my soulmate. Well, your soulmate's in you, for one thing. It's you. And I think she's guiding us back to each other as a, you know, as that loving, strong female um, that's not just this little, teeny, little young girl anymore that they're putting on the the platform for us so that only if you're 12 you're that's the that's a beauty um that it's not the a woman that is awesome and the same kind of i think um and robert's touched on this so many times about this the the, the male and the female and the the, uh, the that there's this um there's sort of a decimation to both that we've been packaged and sold that's really neither of either. I mean, mm. we're, we're, we're just not supposed to be the awesome part of who we are. Like all of a sudden it's not a beautiful thing to be an awesome, strong woman um, or man for that matter. I'm, so for me, she, she connects that. She connects all that for me. And I think she's here to guide us and um, help us to find ourselves and uh, to find the truth of our being and bring it. And uh, I think we can call on her, and she'll and she'll help. Um, yeah. Did that help? Yeah, thank you for your answer. And I may not have phrased it perfectly, but um, you expanded on that very well. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Hey, hey thanks, thanks for calling in, Robert, and joining us. All right. All right, have a good night. Let's see who else is on the line here. Hi, we're uh, you're on the line with Robert and Gloria. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear us? Hello. Is this my turn? Yes, you're on the air. You are ah. yeah, up to bat. Okay. Yeah. Hey. What, hey. Great. What's hey. My name. Uh, I'm just having a ball listening to my dear friend, Gloria. This okay. is Anne Marie. Oh, hi, Anne Marie. And, How are uh, you? I'm I'm thrilled to hear you and uh, thrilled to be introduced to Blog Talk Radio. I'm new to this, so right. oh, Robert's cool. very groovy. You should definitely go check out his site, RobertPhoenix.com. You'll totally oh, yeah. dig it in. Yeah. But there's a there's a couple things I wanted. You've been talking about a lot of great things, and one thing, Robert, that you said uh, or asked Gloria was why why would someone 
uh, why should someone go to someone like Gloria as opposed to going to uh, a GNC or a Whole Foods store to get to get these um, special aromatherapy oils or creams? And I, I think I have a good answer. And my answer is this, as a former client, and it's only former because I live 600 miles away now. Um, you need the treatments, right? Yeah. For treatments, yeah, yeah. for aromatherapy. Yeah. Therapy. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to go to someone who knows, like Gloria, mm. what what mm. plants go together, mm. what things, you know, what the contraindications mm. are. Can I have... Um, not lavender, but spike and with something else. Right. Uh, and and what's the reaction going to be? Is it going to be? And also, is it going to be good for me, and for whatever my body needs at that time? If I were to go into a box shop all by myself, I could say, okay, I like the smell of this, I like the smell of that, and maybe put them together and cause cause havoc in my body that I don't even realize I'm doing because I'm not studying in it. But um, so that's the first thing that I heard and why I think it's so important to go to someone like Gloria for this information because it's specialized. It's really specialized and um, she's really good at it. Mm. But the other, the other thing that you were talking about was our strength and, and, you know, things going on in the workplace and people not having their strength anymore or yeah. their will to do things. And, and I think um, in my mind that not only do we have to find our inner strength again, we have to find our inner knowing, and then we have to trust ourselves with what we know. Right. Yeah, that's that's right. That's you an know? excellent point, Ann. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm there. <laughs> right on. Um, but this is, um, it's such a, a great way to do things, and, and you know me, Gloria, and... Uh, the way I do things, and, and I don't know all the ins and outs of the aromatherapy, but I know it works uh, for me. And for my kids, we've used the um, Sleep Angel for years for my kids. Oh, they great. sleep well. Mm-hmm. They sleep well. And, um, you know, even for people who don't think it works ever, if I've gotten to them and been able to put the Sleep Angel or have them use the Sleep Angel, they're amazed at... Um, how well they sleep, how much better they feel, how rested they are, and just um, how how much more peaceful they are when everything seems to be in line. So um, those are just my comments as to what you're talking about, and I can uh, hang up and listen to more, but this is a, a great venue, and I will uh, get on and look, learn more about you, Robert. Hey, thanks, Anne. Hey, Anne, I got, I got, I've got a quick question for you. You, you just mentioned... Uh, how the sleep angel uh, works for your children. What about you personally? Did you have a success story uh, when you were working with Gloria? And uh, if so, what was that like for you? Oh, you bet. Um, actually, when I met Gloria, let's see, I was um, about 375 pounds. I'm five foot six. That's a little big. And um, I, my body was falling apart to be honest, uh, from the inside out. I I just, uh, there was lots going on in my life, and I guess I didn't realize how much it was affecting me at that time. And um, I went to Gloria just, you know, to see what it would be like to have um, uh, some massage and some aromatherapy uh, to help me feel better. And to be honest, Gloria really helped me um, get my body back on track. Um, I'm not 370 pounds anymore. That was, you know, a lot of work that I did to uh, get down to a normal weight, to a healthy weight, um, Uh and uh, it helped me physically, but it also helped me um, mentally and emotionally because of the different um, uh, aromas that she used, the different techniques that she used to... uh, help get my body back in line, get all my chakras back in line. Um, I don't know all the terms like I should, um, but I know that at one point it was like somebody had taken my body and twisted it like a coil 
Mm-hmm. And it had to be unraveled uh, piece by piece or vertebrae by vertebrae. And it took a lot of years to do that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so my success story is that I'm still here. Because really, right. I think when she met me, I wasn't supposed to be here. Yeah. And, and so. Well, good. That's, you, can't get, you can't get much more successful than that. And I'm sure your children are glad you're here. And, and it sounds like you're, uh, you're really evolving and unfolding in a, in a wonderful way during a She's pretty doing awesome, time. awesome, awesome, though. I'm very yeah. proud of you, Anne. Hmm? I'm very proud of you, Anne Marie. You're doing awesome. Oh, thank I you. mean, I, I completely remember the day I first worked, on, worked with Anne. Um, it was uh, pretty scary. It was mm-hmm. a pretty scary thing. We, I knew I had my little hands full. And but Anne, you had to do the work. You had to reach out. And you did amazing, step by step. You did that, Anne. I may have been there to witness it. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. You telling me that I'm actually crying, of course, because. The, the most any of us, I think, can want to do is to help anybody. And um, I remember that. I remember you coming in here, but you did it. You walked it. I witnessed you, but you walked it, and you did what you had to do. I may have supplied some tools, but, Annie, you used them. Well, and here's the thing, though. It's the tools that you're supplying that are going to help so many more people. And and just by doing this and talking and being out there, um, there's a lot of people out there like me who are going to have the opportunity to learn more. And um, with Robert, with you putting Gloria on here, that's that's going to get it out even further. And and I'm really appreciative of that. Well, we thank you for calling in, Anne. Okay. And uh, you know, listen in some other time and check out the blog and. Uh, Okay. Yeah, hang in there and just, just keep on doing your thing. Oh, Ann yeah. just made a CD, honey. She is rocking it. She's not the All hot right. Ann, what's the how hot? What do you? What do you? What's your size now? She's looking good, honey. Ken. Right, All right. Honey? Right. Woo hoo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Have a okay. good night. Keep Thanks talking. A lot, Thank you, Ann Marie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good night. Wow, that's that's amazing. That's size ten. Oh. Uh, yeah, I totally, believe me, I told, I actually asked her. I said, I asked her if she wanted to be here. Yeah. And uh, she had to name it. Yeah. Uh, you see it. I mean, when someone's toes are curling up, and there's lots and lots of things to see, but their whole spirit, their whole energy field is, like, separating yeah. from them. Yeah, right. I'll never exactly. forget the... The first time that happened, I, I was at a retreat, another, you know, intensive taking classes in uh, Athens. And um, this girl was running and running around and taking you. She was supposed to. It was her job was to make sure everybody got refreshments and towels and all those kinds of things. And I thought, you know, what is with this girl? Because she's moving, like, kinetically, and yet yeah. I feel not a thing energetically. And that was a long time ago. It was back, like I said, in the early 90s. And she she killed herself that night. So uh-huh. the, the no, to recognize, I mean, God, believe me, the universe, te- the way they teach me is deep and big. And it's etch, it, they etch it right into my being so I don't forget it. Um, and um, so you see that. When someone's energy is just not, and that's just, you see so much of that now. If people just yeah. can't be in their body. They they just yeah. can't take it. So so yeah, then they don't have the energy and they don't have a whole lot of everything. They're just cutting their own life force out. And this brings you right back front and center. And the other thing I do, uh, talk about connecting it, I, I use the cycle, the moon, mm-hmm. the planets, and so on and so forth. And we've had conversations about that. And Robert, you are a great astrologer, Robert. I really okay, love your I work. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So yeah. I use the cycles. You're welcome. I use the cycles, and I work with that and gemstones mm-hmm. and Reiki and whatever I can put. It's like Prego. It's in there. 
<laughs> That's funny. Right? Wow. Yeah, I, I, I totally get it. So we've got about uh, 20 minutes left in the show. Let me give out the number again. It's 347-308-8995, 347-308-8995. And if you have a question for Gloria and or your friend and you want to say hi or you're somebody on the Facebook community, obviously Robert or somebody that, that we were talking about earlier on, um, and you want to talk to Gloria or you want to ask her a question or you've got something that's going on physically or emotionally that you want a little insight on. By the way, I haven't mentioned this. I mean, Robert talked about it just a little bit, but one of the things that, you know, that you also have in your bag of tricks mm-hmm. is that you are very psychic. And I can, I can certainly speak to this from my own personal experience. You know, I've I had a few uh, sort of consciousness emails that you, you know, sent me on a number of occasions. And, you know, and in those emails is some pretty interesting information, uh, some of which really came to light. You, 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 you know, you saw the name of a, a woman that was kind of, you know, going to be in my, my, my space. And uh, sure enough, within about uh, 30 days, that, that name it was not, it was a semi-unusual name. I don't want to say the name of the year. Right. It was a semi-unusual name. And and so it wasn't just like you know any name that was you know, going to be coming into my life like uh, you know, Julie or something like that. Right. Uh, but you know it was it was semi unusual and there she, and she showed up and it was very it was very impressive very very impressive. So not not only are you bringing your body of knowledge with everything that you've learned with aromatherapy, but you're bringing. You know, we talk when we when I when I put this up on on, on blog talk. I talk I talked about the sixth scent with, with Gloria Savage. Yes, I and love it, the name. That's so groovy. Well, a part of that sixth scent is your own sixth sense, right. your own psychic awareness that that I think goes into your work. Is that something that you can actually describe and um, communicate and talk about to people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Um, it's something that just, sometimes it's vision. I get lots of those. Um, I get, um, clear audience. I've, some, I've had periods where it was a little more, uh, with heart, was not, like people would walk around like radios. Right. And, um, that's when I went to live in the barn then, because I was like, oh, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> and uh, you, you know, I'm walking up to people because people, you know, I'm like telling them things because I'm thinking, well, I gotta tell her that, and then they just look at you like you're like, and people get, <laughs> they get afraid. You yeah. know, I adjusted to that um, somewhat. It's because it's they start, to, you know, part. I realize that everybody has this little part of themselves that they think, oh, I don't want you seeing that, and and really, I'm pretty. I'm pretty okay with a lot of things. I mean, I'm kind of one of those people, you can tell me almost anything. And um, I'm going to try and help you walk through it. And um, so anyway, I get clear audience. I get signs. I get, um, just come, and I, it's, I think it's just because I pray and I meditate a lot. And I'm, it's, it's, it's not a, um, Sometimes I do it. I'm kind of constantly communing. Right. And asking. And even, I even sort of try to entertain, like, those angels watching, big people, whatever, spirits, nature, right. spirits, whatever it is for you. And I just sort of, like, I get it, they're watching. And uh, I just start cracking up and, you know, smiling like I'm on stage for them. Uh-huh. You know, how am I doing now? And uh, yeah. I think it's like a... Who are you going to throw the ball to, the person with the mid open or the person that doesn't even have the mid on? Right? Well, I'm always going, okay, show me the way. Show me the yeah. way. Show me what you want. What can I do? And then it just sort of comes to me. And people ask me, and, so, and I'll use a chart as a tool, and it sort of pops out of there. The oils, for sure, help. I don't know a lot of people. I just think people aren't connected because I think you can access it, and some of us may have more of a proclivity, but it, it, they, they'll help you right, connect right into it, right into your being, right into that source, 
is we all have that little little transmitter in us. So yeah. 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 Well, speaking of transmitter, I think we've got somebody from Cleveland, Ohio, that wants to transmit a greeting to you. Hello. What's your name? Hi. This is Sandy. Hi, Gloria. Hey, Sandy. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Calling, How are you? Oh, yeah. you're welcome. And hello, Robert. It's nice to talk with you as well. Hi, Sandy. Good to hear your voice. So what's well, happening? We have a whole harem of women now. <laughs> <laughs> All it's the Robert virtual, fans. It's a vir- virtual harem. <laughs> Right. A lot of good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, so I found that? you. Well, Robert, I found you through Gloria, um, and I'm, I'm just new to your to your circle there. I mean, but um, I've I enjoy I've enjoyed reading your your site and your posts, and and the same goes for Gloria. I met Gloria a few months ago, and um, just had an instant connection with her, and just love her, you know. So I, I don't really have a question, but I, I've been listening, and I, I just wanted to call and say hi. <laughs> oh, that's nice. All right, right on, Sandy. Well, thanks for calling in and saying hi. Yeah. But if you have anything you, you want to tell me, please feel free. <laughs> well, let me, let me ask you this. Have you used any of uh, Gloria's uh, essential oils or any of her uh, crafted products by any chance? No, not yet, but we've talked I've talked with her about some of the things I'd like to to explore with her. So um very soon I'm gonna I'm I mean I'm still still learning. I mean I, I, I realize how little I know about all this and so I'm I'm in that stage of just being completely fascinated by it just being just listening to her and reading her posts and and, and absorbing all the information that she shares with everybody on a daily basis. Maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, well, it's, cool. Cool. I met Sandy at a blues. Uh, it was a blues something, right? Wasn't it? What we Cleveland doing? blues. Yeah, Society. Cleveland yeah. Blues Society yeah. Thing. And so, Robert, that's this whole other world that now people are. I actually didn't quite talk about a lot of this when I would go out because then I'm in my uh-huh. singing blues, you know, jazz persona. Right. And uh, I do sometimes. I mean, I'll actually anoint people and so forth like this. But um, what's happened is this whole bridge is taking place through Facebook, through the, my music world, into each other. And so now, and kind of, I was slightly apprehensive because um, it's it's you just don't know how people are going to perceive you then. But so when I was kind of liking my separate worlds in a way, I guess, too. Um, and um, but what's happened is Sandy starts saying about what reading my what I'm writing, and then she found out really what I'm doing. And um, I start at first I was uh, like I said a little tentative, I'm thinking, uh oh, you you you're reading my what? Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was kind of right. I was a yeah. little bit um, like, okay, because I do get out there. I mean, I write some fire out stuff for a lot of people, yeah. especially Cleveland, uh, where it's, it's, we're not L.A. out here, okay? <laughs> right? So, and right. I'm dealing with people that don't have this conversation. They don't. Yeah. I, mean, I was in court 10 years ago with them calling me a witch. And people oh. whipping here, so oh. it's a whole different ball game I'm dealing with. And Sandy was brave enough to, to talk to me and um, ask me some things and start talking about the thing. And she said she was digging it, and I thought that's cool. And well, I yeah, I, I know. Know, Sandy. Yeah, I don't think of it as being brave at all. I mean, I mean, I'm an Aquarius, and so I, I mean, I've always loved new things and and spiritual things and. But when I first met Gloria, there was just, it was almost like, wow, I, have I known you before? You know, I mean, there was just such a connection there. And um, I'm a wet magic um, woman. <laughs> yeah. and, and her beautiful music that she makes and everything, I just, she just totally drew me in. But, uh, um, and, but I realized how little I know, like I said before, and just um, 
So, I mean, I just feel like a sponge, and I just want to keep learning and learning and learning from you guys. So I, I really appreciate everything that you're doing and all that you give. Uh, just on your well, day, Sandy, both of you, you just on your day. Good. Huh? Oh. I was just going to say, Sandy, you know, Robert is a great astrologer. So if you go to his site, check on there, you can click on his link, and yeah, he gives a wonderful, wonderful reading, and you can, he has a lovely voice, and good. And you'll know me, honey, so I'm here. But him you can hook into, you know, connect to, I should say. Thank hey, Sandy, you. I just wanted to say I wanted to say one thing before uh, we say goodnight to you. And I think a lot of times we have this uh, uh, misinterpretation about knowledge and about what we, what we don't know, you know. And I think it's really more along the lines of what we don't remember, you know. Right. And, and I think that, you know, really what a lot of us are doing is really remembering, you know, who we are and why we came here. And, 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 and to do that, we've, we've got to let go of some of our, culture, our culturation and our socialized uh, behavior and precepts. And then we can really allow these, these, these memories and these connections and the sense of what feels right in terms of our, our actions and our thoughts, we can let that emerge. And, uh, and that's a wonderful process of, of you know, remembering, you know, right. who we are. And, and uh, so I really want to thank you for calling in and, and saying hi and, and saying hello to Gloria. And uh, we will catch you on Facebook because we got one more call. So we want to talk to Gloria. Oh, good. That's right. i got to remember it, though, for you. That's what we'll get with you is a remember. It'll help you remember and connect back to your, you know, yourself and why you're here now. Yeah, let's Sandy. do that. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank All you. right, okay, Sandy. Good night. Bye-bye. All right, we got, we got time for one more call. Let's see who this is. You're on Free Association Radio with Robert and Gloria. Who is this? Hello. You're with us. You're on the air. Ah, they dropped off. Okay. I think they freaked, they freaked out. Yeah. So, yeah, so that yeah. was cool. You right? know, that was really cool. You had your, you had your friend come on, Sandy. Yeah. My, I think she's my Facebook friend now. That was right? really that was nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure yeah. there'll be quite a few people that uh, will connect uh, to you. But you know what I want to just touch real quick on before we continue is that, you know, there, you, you're right. There's this whole operating system. And it's getting much. It's getting so dense in some ways, but at the same time, the veil's parting. The apocalyptic uh, explanation, and yes. um, or the Mayans call it <clears throat> the revealing, mm-hmm. the great revealing. And these yeah. oils really do help to connect into that those lost cells. So because once you connect into it and ground yourself, just like electricity. And then mm-hmm. connect into something so whole, to be holy and heal these, this being. Then you get the way out of the operating system. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Right through the heart and right out. And the next thing you know, you're like, whoa, I, don't, I can't even believe I was even thinking that. How, yeah. do people, how are people staying in that thing? Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's pretty wild. It's, uh, you know, I, I think one of the more interesting um, shifts in perception that I've experienced and I think other people are experiencing is really getting to a place of what's important mm-hmm. and, and, um, and then honoring, you know, what's important, mm-hmm. you know, honoring what, honoring what you, you know as being uh, just the most potent thing that you can express or experience or share and, and I think that that's, that's, that's where we're headed because we're winnowing away the non-essential ingredients of our lives, our, our, our you know, this Oh, I whole, like to put that great. <laughs> yeah, this whole layer of materialism that we've been mm-hmm. literally narcotic, narcoticized on mm-hmm. for the last 40 years, well, that's shrinking. Mm-hmm. That's going away. Yep. And, and, all, and all the, you know, and, and if we can look at one thing, that, that this crisis in the banking industry has brought to us is that it's cut off our drip line uh, for our lust for material goods and, and our, our material, our identification with material reality. 
And, and what we can now do is we can now experience something that is material. Your, your, your essences and your oils and your bombs are very material. They're very much part of this world. Yeah. So we don't want to deny the material world. Mm -hmm. We live in a material world. But it's shifting our perception and our relationship to things. Right. And, that, and now once we begin to, you know, winnow away the things, what's left? What's important? It's connecting. It's love. It's relating. Right. It's sharing, it's honoring, it's nurturing, it's building, it's growing, it's right. creating. I mean, these are the things that bring us our humanity. Yeah. And we have a wonderful opportunity if we can stay healthy, and that's mm -hmm. a big part, to stay healthy mm -hmm. and, and really learn to, to, you know, to walk the red road, so to speak. Yeah, I agree 100%. I say that all the time. What's important? I mean, really, what do we need? You need to eat. We need to have shelter. And we right. need each other, right? And, right. Um, and everything else is all the layers of the illusion that get, that sucks us out of who we are. And uh, as I had that um, experience the other day before that earthquake, and I say I felt like I was had, like dropping my little booster rockets and burning off the fuselage. Mm. And so, and yeah, it's integrity is key. Right now, in this process, there is no question in my mind about that. Yeah, absolutely. That, right? Get real. Get who, who are you? Really just you. And I think that the process, the, 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 the awful part of what we're going through is does leave that revealing of, of the essence of, of who we are left over. And people can start to think, oh, my God, it's like I've, it's like I've, it's like I've committed suicide. Because I'm not mm. me. I'm not living my life. This mm -hmm. life I was given, this, yeah. you know, was given up for you to, to, yeah. to live. Yeah, very, very interesting. So let's, uh, we've got just a few minutes left here. Uh, let's go over your website again. It's okay. Arch Ancient, A-R-C-A-N-C-I-E-N-T, archancient.com. Right. And, and they can get, people can get in touch with you there. Mm -hmm. They can they can find out about um, all the different types of essential oils, how you craft them, the forms you put them in. Mm -hmm. You can also do personal consultations, right. right? That's true. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there because I'm not sure if this is part of your tool bag yet, but I bet if somebody out there wanted to bring Gloria to a community or community center um, and wanted Gloria to teach over. Yeah, I do that. Uh, a weekend. There you go. Reach yeah, out yeah, to her yeah. and she'll, and yeah, she'll, get, she'll get on the road. For, um, probably uh, 15 years or so. In fact, I'll be at the AMTA conference here in the uh, end of April in Columbus, and I teach at Case, and I teach at the Institute here. And I teach at a lot of places, Baldwin Wallace, and hospitals, and communities, and even libraries, and, and so forth. So I, and I love it, Robert, because I get to get all my little acting kit out, my little oh, yeah. kit out, and I'm having, I have a good time. We have a good uh, time. You're, you're a natural. You're a total natural. <laughs> so, so, listen, I really want to thank you for coming on with me tonight. Oh, and, well, thank uh, you, Robert. I'm really, really glad I met you. You're just such an awesome human. You, you, you are part of what we restores my faith in humankind, people like you. You really do. Well, I think the great part about this whole experience, you know, over the past year is that uh, we've had, at least I've had so many wonderful experiences of divine reflection, you know, right. and uh, when you share something like that with me, um, you know, I feel really honored, and I know that, um, you know, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, too, so yeah. this, is, this is a great, great time that we're going through, and if we mm -hmm. can honor that and recognize that in each other and, and be able and willing to accept and embrace what somebody shares with us, I think it's gonna it's gonna really empower us and, and, and you know and you know help us along the way. Yeah, so it's uh, seeing people step up really, and then yeah. all the other people that are just waking up to step up, you know, are trying. Yeah. I mean, it's just gorgeous. That you that you can't you can't package that. Cecil B. DeMille can't write this stuff like this. It's, that's the yeah. that's the breathtaking magnificence of it, you know. Yep. Yep. We are on our way. Right. So. Um, again, I want to thank you for coming on, and mm -hmm. I will see you on Facebook, and I'll see you who knows where else. And, uh, 
Yeah. So Thanks, take care. Robert. Thanks so much yeah, for having me. You're okay. welcome. And, All right, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. So that was Gloria Savage of ArcAncient.com. And uh, I have my son here on my lap who's trying to get my attention. And you know you're on the radio right now. Did you know that? What do you want to say to people? Do you have anything you want to say? Hmm? Nothing. La la is, is, the, is the operative word of the evening. Next week, I'm going to have Gentile Abdullah on the show. You don't want to miss this show. Gentile Abdullah is 13 years old. He lives in Texas. He's from Ethiopia. He's a Muslim. And he is uh, a, he's, he's a prodigy. And his field of specialty is time travel. And he has come up with an incredibly plausible scenario for building a time travel machine. And, and when I say this, I'm not talking about this in, in, in speculative terms. He's very serious about it. He's very serious about constructing it. And um, his theories are, are fascinating. And again, he's 13 years old. And I think uh, it will be a wonderful show. And it will give us some great insights into some of the great souls that are starting to come through and really help us take this experience of life on Earth to a whole other level. So that's it. It's a wrap for Sunday night. Oh, one more thing. Starting this Wednesday, I will be doing on Wednesday mornings live readings, mini live readings every Wednesday. And this Wednesday will be my first one uh, during the week, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to talk to me and get a little live reading, uh, of, you know, a five to, ten, five to ten minute reading, just come in and give me a call. So that's it. It's a wrap. Another week is over and done. So have a great Monday. And as always, use your mind to discern what's real and use your heart to stay open to what's possible. Until next time. I like that. Huh? Well, I love